you said you found Jay Powell's uh, presser to be sober, uh, very straightforward. What do you mean by that? Well, I think he repeated messages that he has been saying, and they have been interpreted differently from time to time by markets as either dovish or hawkish. But the, the, the message is they still have a lot of work to do. They feel that inflation remains stubborn. They, uh, he said that the two recent inflation readings that were, were taken as encouraging are welcome, but the, they're not decisive in any way. And I took away from today's uh, press conference that they will march forward to five and a quarter, five to five and a quarter range, and maybe higher, and they will stay there for most of the year. So stay there for most of the year. That means what? That, they, that inflation is going to be coming down. That's their forecast, but not enough and not fast enough for them to, uh, you know, start moving in the other direction, lower rates. Yeah, if you look at the SEP, it shows a slower pace of, of uh, getting inflation under control. Inflation comes down more slowly, and obviously the, the message is the the interest rate, the policy rate has to be higher in order to even get that result. So they have really, in many respects, uh, I'll just say downgraded their expectations and think they have, uh, you know, they have a, a a year to navigate here that's going to be quite challenging. Well, in fact, it's it's not as though Jay Powell said, well, darn, you know, we're just going to sit here and watch the numbers, and if they don't come down enough, we're not going to do anything. He made it pretty clear that the n numbers are not coming down once they get up to that 5.1 and stay there for a while, that they are ready to push rates even higher. Do you get that? I get that. I think it's. I, I think they would like to avoid a stop-go pattern. However, so the ideal path of policy would be they get to a point that they think is sufficiently restrictive, and then they go on hold for quite some time to wring inflation out of the system to a point in which they're highly confident that if not two percent has been achieved, at least the direction is clearly in the direction of the target. Is 5%, 5%, 5 5.1, I should say, is that going to be high enough to get that result? And, you know, it remains to be seen, I, I, I think. There are elements at work, and Powell uh, referenced those in his press conference, such as uh, low, uh, lower than pre-COVID participation in, in the labor market. He called it almost structural, conceivably a structural problem in the labor market. That suggests to me further wage pressure, that or continuing wage pressure, and that translates into stubborn inflation. So, particularly in the services part of, of the economy. So, uh, it may, you know, it may be that five to five and a quarter is not enough. Dennis, David here to pick up on that last point you just made. If the issue in the labor market is structural, is a mild recession going to do the job, or do they need to take really a, a stronger hammer into this wall and break it down? Again, that remains to be seen. It's, it's, it's really hard to tell. Too many, too many factors at play. But um, I, I do think, even though the Fed did not signal any in, uh, expectation in their median number of a recession, there are people on the committee uh, if you look at the range in the SEP, who are actually predicting a, a negative growth for 2023. So there's one or more people who see a recession coming. I think they all hope it will, ha will be mild and that, that, that the, the policy that so far is going to be enough to do the job, but we don't know. And Dennis, I have to ask what you made of the, the price action. This is a bond market that continues to just not believe what the Fed is saying. And in fact, actually reacts more to, to data like the CPI uh, the day before than actually what the Fed says. Um, should I just be focusing on the data moving forward more so than what the Fed says or, or does? Well, I think what the Fed says is their interpretation of, of the data. Um, I would take the, let's just call it the 
verbal message today from Powell in the press conference, particularly as uh, not a, not a, a a hard and fast statement of intent, but it's the way they see things playing out, knowing what they know today. And I think that message was clearly that 2023 is going to be a year of rising interest rates in the beginning and then likely the rest of the year holding at a high level and could go higher if, if inflation continues to be stubborn. You know, Dennis, this didn't come up at the press conference today. Uh, and I was a little bit surprised because there was the story, there is a story, I should say, and we know for sure that just before that CPI report came out, the last couple of minutes, there was tremendous moves in the bond market. Nobody seems to know if there was a leak. Uh, the Commerce Department says they don't know of one. The White House says maybe they're looking at it. But as someone who sat on the Fed, what, what would something like that mean for the Fed? You're trying to do policy. You're not responsible for that at all. It's not the Fed's business to let those numbers out. Um, after your years at the Fed, what would you think of something like that? Well, I think it's 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 uh, very regrettable. It's it's uh, it's discouraging to have a suggestion of a leak of, of key data like that. But the Fed has nothing to do with it. When I was there, we we got the data at the same time everyone else got it, and so it would have been 8:30 on Tuesday morning that that uh, the CPI data came across. And uh, there's a quick report put together and put in front of the committee. But uh, apart from that, the Fed is no different than anyone else in terms of the timing of a data release. So if there was something that went on, it's not a Fed problem. So in, in one more thing that did was said at the press conference was, and people made a lot more of this than I did at the time, but so many people have talked about the fact that Jay Powell was asked about, it's a typical question now, would you consider dropping the 2% inflation target, uh, moving to a different target? And he said, we're not thinking about it. We're not talking about it. We're not going to do it. And then he just, a, a sort of an offhanded comment at the end said, m m you know, maybe some sort of long-term project. And everyone went, oh my God, that's so dovish. Why did he say that? When you saw that, what did you think? I, I thought he told it the way it is, uh, and, and that is they're not thinking about it. Uh, the 2% is their target, and uh, it's fixed, uh, I think, in the minds of all the committee members and fixed in the institution, if you will, uh, uh, up and down. Um, and they've a lot has been invested in trying to get the public to understand the 2% target. And uh, the markets as well, of course. I, I just don't see that they're going to entertain that until, uh, at least until a time in which things are so calm and so stable that they can think deeply about something like that. So I thought he gave a very straightforward answer, and that is it's not on the table.